Even though the price of uranium has doubled in the last two years, people think it could double again. John, the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust has been a very successful product. When you took it over two years ago, it had a net asset value of $600 million, just over 18 million pounds of uranium. And here we are two years later, and the net asset value is $3.5 billion, and it's holding over 60 million pounds of uranium. What have the flows been like in the past few months? Yeah, it's hard to believe that we're coming up to the two-year anniversary of the trust. It's It's been... Uh, an incredible journey and obviously uh, had incredible success and response from the marketplace. As you said, I mean, we've gone from 600 million to three and a half billion. So it's, it's, it's been a big win. And we were pretty active buying uranium in, in the first quarter. And that's obviously slowed down a little bit as the Fed has uh, become increasingly hawkish and uh, clearly signaling to the market that it is not done with its tightening cycle. We hope it's going to be ending soon, but it's clearly uh, put a damper on a lot of different asset classes as investors are kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for the Fed to, to finish, and uh, they've been sitting in the comfort of, of fixed income and money market predominantly. We've seen a lot of strength in the uranium market with the long-term contracting price and also the spot price. The spot price is up, uh, I believe, 15% on the year, and spot is up around 10% on the year. But we're not seeing follow-through with the equities, with the exception of Cameco, that's up 30% on the year, but a lot of the developers, a lot of the explore codes are down on the year. How do you explain that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's a it's a function of the risk off environment that we're in right now. These companies obviously need to raise a lot of capital over the coming years, either through debt and or equity. And right now, it's it's a very difficult market environment to be raising equity at these depressed prices, as well as the cost of debt has gone up substantially in the last 12 months. So all of that weighs on some of these companies that are still trying to develop assets for tomorrow. Cameco has obviously been the real big winner this year. Uh, as their contract book has has uh, has really grown substantially as they're winning new businesses, utilities, restock inventories. So I think it's a matter of time before some of the smaller uh, uranium companies start to perform a little better. I think the end of the Fed tightening cycle is going to be a key key mark for us in terms of looking for that change of se in sentiment. And you and your team spend a lot of time on the road marketing North America, South America, and Europe. What sort of interest are you getting from investors about the uranium products? Yeah, I think people are very intrigued because they look at the supply demand uh, fundamentals, they look at the supply chain, and they see a lot of upside in the, in the commodity prices. So even though the price of uranium has doubled in the last two years, people think it could double again. And that's not our, our call, but people do see the, 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 the supply demand imbalance. I mean, if you just look at the utilities going out to, let's say, the next uh, few years, they have significant amounts of uncovered needs uh, for uranium that they need to go and still buy in the marketplace. And we're not sure where all that uranium is going to come from because uh, we haven't really developed a new mine in many years. It's, it's basically been restarting mines that have been on care and maintenance. Those are the easy pounds to get out of the ground. The hard pounds is going to be building the next new mine. And that's the big challenge for the, for the sector. And you speak to many players within the whole uranium space. What are you hearing? What are the utilities up to, both in the long-term market and in the spot market? Yeah, well, I think utilities are finally acknowledging that uh, the signs are all pointing to a much, much better prospects for their own businesses. Uh, nuclear is being talked about in a very favorable light for the first time in a long time um, in many markets. A couple of days ago, Sweden said it's going to commit to 100% clean energy and not renewable energy. They use the word clean energy, which includes nuclear. And, and, you know, Sweden is obviously a small country, but I think it's symbolic that governments are casting a different light on, on nuclear energy. They're including it in their low greenhouse gas uh, bucket now. And that was not the case two years ago. And all of that is very supportive. So as a utility, you're thinking your business is uh, going to be around a lot longer than maybe you thought it was two years ago as plants were closing and there were government initiatives to decommission plants like there, there were in Germany and places like Spain. But that I think is shifting. And uh, as these plants get life extensions, we see the immediate impact in the marketplace where they need to come to market and buy large quantities of uranium to continue to, 
their operations, and that has an impact uh, definitely in the in the market. So in 2022, there was 125 million pounds contracted. Where do we stand now in 2023? Well, based on the last industry report, I saw 107 million pounds. So I think we're in pretty good position to blow past last year's number, which was a 10-year high. Um, but I think the number that we're focused on is trying to hit 150 million pounds or more. Why? Because that's what we think is, is the annual replacement rate for the, uh, the world's existing nuclear power plants. So, you know, what will really drive the price going forward is contracting at or above annual replacement rate. And the industry has, has obviously been contracting way below uh, annual replacement rate for many years. And we think that we're just, you know, starting a new contracting cycle that will last several years. So given what's happening with the long-term contracting price and also the spot price, I would imply there's a lot of interest coming from utilities. But what about investors? What are they doing with the spot product and also with the equities? What are you seeing in your product? Yeah, well, I think a lot of them are just sitting on the sidelines. They are, they built up pretty sizable positions in these equities and the physical uh, commodity funds um, the last two years. If you think about uh, how much capital has come into the sector in the last two years. It's pretty material. Um, and so I think a lot of investors are sitting and holding what they own. They're not necessarily selling what they have, but they're not necessarily aggressively buying either. And I think that has kind of stalled out a little bit of the excitement in the sector. But I think they remain very bullish and have very positive long-term price expectations for the sector. You and your team are always very good at developing new products for investors to participate in new themes within the markets. What are you working on? Well, we're definitely continuing to focus on the energy transition uh, thematic. We think it is just in the early stages. It's obviously much further ahead in places like Europe, but the rest of the world I think is catching up. EVs um, adoption is, is clearly hit a tipping point last year, and we think will accelerate over the next several years, particularly in North America. And, you know, we're going to look for those emerging technologies and themes and try to capitalize on them for our investors when we spot them. Well, that was a great overview, and thank you very much for making the time. Thank you for having me.